In this video, I'm going to modify my Tough Torque K46 transaxle on my John Deere D130 lawnmower to allow for oil changes without having to remove the transaxle from the mower. The K46 that I'll be working on is a subvariant called the T40J. Let's take a look at the finished mod. We've replaced the vent plug with a threaded hose barb. The transaxle case is split into two distinct reservoirs that are connected by a communication at the top. We've drilled and tapped two drain plug holes in the bottom of the case one for the hydro pump side, and another for the gear side of the case. The plan is to use this hand pump to pump the transmission oil through the drain plug on the hydro pump side of the case. Once the hydro side is full, the oil will spill over into the gear side of the case until it finally comes out of the barb that we installed where the vent used to be. We will have some tubing connected to the barb that goes to an external expansion tank that we will mount onto the mower. This tank has a vented cap that will allow air to escape as hot transmission oil expands into the tank while the transmission is in use. Please note that this video is for entertainment purposes only. I'm not an expert, I'm just a guy messing around with his mower transmission. This mod almost certainly voids your warranty. Attempting to reproduce this could potentially break your transmission, your mower, or cause bodily harm or property damage. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into the mod. I got myself some 8mm Tough Torque drain plugs that I'm going to install on the bottom of the case where there are these little bosses in the casting. You can see one right here, and another one right here. This is where Tough Torque installs drain plugs on some machines that have them. When you look at the outside of the case, the spots where the drain plugs will be are right here, and right here. Okay, I'm going to drill my first drain plug now. I've kind of shimmed my case so it's flat on my workbench. I put some wood inside to help me clamp it to the bench to steady it a little. I'm also going to be holding it with my hand, but clamping it down at a single point will help me out a little. I'm using a 1764 drill bit with a little bit of cutting fluid to help guide the bit through the material. If you're going to install drain plugs, you really need to do your drilling from the inside of the case. I would highly discourage attempting to drill from the outside without taking the trans apart. The chances are pretty high that you will end up with metal chips in your transmission, and trying to hit the exact spot those bosses are in seems pretty problematic from the outside. Now it's time to tap the hole. I'll be using an M8 1.25 tap. Again, we'll be using some cutting fluid. I'm going to start threading the tap by hand, trying to keep it square to the hole. As you're moving along, you want to back the tap up every so often to clear the chips that are being cut. This is the wrong tool for this. I misplaced my tap handle, so I'm just using a ratchet with a socket that fits the end of the tap. Alright, let's get some of these chips out of the way and test fit a drain plug. The drain plugs from Tough Torque come with a washer, but I'm not going to put it on here yet because the case is still dirty. Let's just do a quick test fit with the bolt. Sweet, that looks good to me. I don't want to crank it down without the washer under there because the base of the bolt flares out a bit. It looks like an even gap all the way around, so I'd call that one a success. Alright, let's drill and tap the other hole. So I've noticed that there's this little fin right here that's pretty close to where the drain plug is going to sit. I don't know if this would interfere with the drain plug. I'm guessing this probably isn't a problem because this is where Tough Torque designs the holes to be. Just to be safe, I'm going to shave part of that little fin down with my Dremel tool. If you decide to do this, you really need to be careful because it's super easy to accidentally take off too much material. Now I'm going to take a piece of emery cloth and smooth things out. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Let's test fit the drain plug again. Alright, I think that'll work. While I'm at it, I'm going to smooth this one out too so the drain plug makes better contact with this currently rough surface. Alright, I think that looks pretty good. Now it's time to work on the vent cap hole. I need to flip this over, but if I do that right now, all these parts inside will fall out. I'm going to remove most of the parts, taking careful note of where everything goes so I'll be able to put everything back in the correct orientations. This is a great time to clean the parts, remove the remaining gasket material, and thoroughly clean the inside of the case. So I have this aluminum threaded barb that I bought on Amazon. I'll include a link to it in the description below, as well as links to all the products I used in this video. What I want to do is install this barb in the vent hole that's on the other side of the case. You can see the barb right here. The threaded side is 18 millimeters with 1.5 threads, and the other side is a half inch hose barb. The hole for the vent on the transmission is a little smaller than we need for the 18 millimeter threads on our barb. Here is the vent cap. 
Let's pry it off carefully and get a look at the hole we want to thread. There's not much to this thing, it's just a press fit. Now we can see the hole that we're going to drill out and tap that will allow us to screw in our threaded barb. You can see that the hole is just a little smaller than we need it to be. To turn this into an 18mm threaded hole, I have a 16.5mm drill bit that I got on Amazon. It's pretty large, so we're just going to enlarge that hole and hopefully not wreck anything. Then we'll tap it and screw in the threaded barb. Here are the taps that I bought for the hole. I got a combo pack that includes a taper tap for getting the hole started, and this one's a plug tap that will let you cut threads closer to the bottom of your hole. If I measure the length of the threaded part of this barb, it's about 10 millimeters. And then I want to measure the inside depth of this hole to figure out how deep I want to drill. So it says about 9.92 millimeters. I probably want to cut through that ring at the bottom of the hole a little bit to make sure I don't end up bottoming out on it when I screw in the barb. To drill out the vent hole, I'm going to use my drill press. I was hoping to do this with a cordless drill because most people have access to one, but this hole makes me a little nervous because I really don't want to mess it up. I think you could probably drill this with a hand drill if you went slow and put the case in a position that was ergonomic for drilling by hand. I feel safer using the drill press, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a liberal amount of cutting fluid for this one. I also would strongly advise against trying to drill out this hole without disassembling the transmission. I'm going to be making quite a mess, but I will be thoroughly cleaning the case when I'm done. Similar to drilling the drain plugs, you really don't want to get any metal chips inside the transmission. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to tap my 16.5mm hole with my 18mm tap. I'm going to use some cutting fluid again. I have my tap chucked into my drill press that's currently unplugged. I'm not going to run my drill press because this would destroy the hole and probably throw the workpiece at me. I'm going to slowly rotate the drill chuck by hand and back it off every so often to clear the chips. This allows me to get the tap perfectly aligned with the hole while I get it started. After I get it started, I'll move it over to my bench and finish it off with my ratchet. I just want to reiterate that my drill press is unplugged, so there's no worry that it could turn on by accident. Now that I have the tap firmly seated, I'm going to uncheck the tap from my drill press. Back at the bench now, I'm going to use a half inch socket to finish tapping the hole. Now that I can feel this bottoming out, I'm going to back out this taper tap and finish off the hole with my plug tap to get the threads closer to the bottom. Alright, check that out. The threads came out awesome. If I was to do this again, I think I would just drill all the way through that ring that's at the bottom of the hole. I'm pretty sure I left enough extra space so my barb will seat properly, but I don't see a good reason to leave that bottom part of the ring there. I'll show you what it looks like on the inside as well. You can see that little lip at the bottom of the hole. I think it would be a smarter move to just drill all the way through that. Let's test screwing in the barb. I'll throw the washer on there so we can get an accurate feel for the depth that we need to screw this down to. Man, that looks super nice. It makes a good seal all the way around. I'm going to take a minute to smooth out the top surface of the hole with some emery cloth so that it makes good contact with the barb. Alright, there we go. I got it all smoothed out. No need to go crazy, I just touched it up a little bit. Now all that's left to do is to clean out the inside of the case and all the parts before we get ready for final assembly. Alright, I got everything cleaned up. Here's a good view of the two sides of the case that are connected at the top by an opening that goes between each side. We have the gear side opening here, and the pump side opening is right here. Let's start putting things back together. I'm going to put a light coating of oil on everything as I go. I got my hydro pump parts back from being rebuilt by Jim at TTHG Services in Canada. If you're curious to know more about that, check out part 1 of this series in the description below. The rebuilt pump parts look great. All the surfaces look smooth and arrived pre-greased. I liked how they wrapped rubber bands around the little pistons to keep them from falling out. Like all the other parts, I'm going to give the pump parts a light coating of oil as well. This little pin can be tricky. It needs to sit inside the pump housing without falling out. The trick everyone uses is to hold it in place with a dab of grease. You just want to keep an eye on that to make sure it doesn't fall out during assembly. Otherwise your bypass rod for allowing the trans to freewheel won't work. Getting the pump assembly seated is hands down the hardest part of putting this thing back together. 
You have to compress the motor pistons while carefully lining everything up. You need to resist the urge to be rough with this. The surfaces of the pump parts are delicate, precision parts. You don't want to do anything that could scratch or gouge them. Absolutely do not resort to hitting or hammering any of these parts to get them seated. This can be done totally by hand if you're patient and persistent. Before I seal the case back up, I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol to clean off any oil that may have gotten on the edges during assembly. Don't forget to put your filter back on and the magnet on the gear side of the case. I'm using Tough Torque's case sealant and following the application instructions on the bottle. You want to take your time doing this and avoid using too much sealant to avoid having it leak into the case. Okay, we're ready to put the case back together. I'm going to loosely put the drain plugs in because I'm going to need to remove one when it's time to put the oil in. I'm going to wait until I have the transmission on the machine before I put the oil in so I can test out my oil filling procedure. Just to be safe, I'm going to mark the drain plug that I'm going to use as my fill hole. I'll torque both of these down later after filling. Now I'm ready to put my threaded barb in where the vent hole used to be. I'm going to crank it down tight but not so tight that I break it off. If you have an old fill cap that's soft in the middle like this, I highly recommend replacing it with a new one. It seems that they changed the design and started manufacturing these to be all metal. Don't forget to toss your magnet back in the fill hole before putting the cap back on. Okay, so now that we have our barb attached, we can attach a length of hose. The one that we will actually use will be longer than this, and then we'll throw on some hose clamps and attach the other end of the hose to our external expansion tank that we will mount onto the mower. Let's put our pulley and fan back on. We will use snap ring pliers to secure the fan. You want to make sure that the snap ring is seated in the groove on the transmission shaft. Let's take a look at the clearance between the expansion tank hose and the fan. When we mount the tank on the mower, we're going to want to make sure that we have the hose bending away from the fan so there's no chance that it could come into contact with it. Okay, let's review. We have our two drain plugs here and here. We're going to use this pump and connect it to the drain plug hole so we can pump the transmission oil up into the hydro pump side of the case. The oil is going to flow up and over into the other side of the case where the gearing is. We won't touch the other drain bolt. We'll just let the oil fill up into the other side of the case. Then eventually the oil will start flowing into the expansion tank. Then we can take off the vented cap. See how it looks funny because it's vented? We're going to take some plastic sheeting and put it over the mouth of the tank. Then we can screw the cap back on over the plastic. This will prevent the vent cap from letting air into the system. This essentially creates a fluid lock that prevents oil from flowing out, similar to when you put your finger over a straw when it has water in it. This will give us time to quickly remove the pump and screw in the drain bolt without losing all of our oil. We will make sure that there's a little extra oil in the expansion tank to take the place of any oil that might leak out. Cool, well I hope to see you in the next video where we mount the transmission on the machine. If you found this video useful, please feel free to like or subscribe. Thanks for watching.